Tonight we gather together remembering Jesus' last hours. We remember those friends betraying, denying, abandoning. We remember Jesus' enemies plotting against him. We remember how they gained the upper hand. We remember the love Jesus had for all. We remember the sacrifice of that love. Tonight we gather, let us remember. Our hymn is from Voices United, number 134. Shadows gather deep and cold. gather deep and cold, lamplight flickers, fades and fails. Lord, you know what daybreak holds, thorns and beatings, cross and nails. You will be denied, betrayed, when the rooster wakes the sun. Yet you kneel alone and pray, not my will but thine be done. In the watches of the night, in the hour when darkness reigns, in the grief that has no light, in the time of fear and pain, then we hold fast to your way, to the victory you have won. Jesus, teach us how to pray, not my will, but thine be done. Sacred silence filled. Holy moment overflowing. Haunting seconds brimming. Tonight too much happens in the holy story for us to comprehend. Too much fear and deceit. Too many questions and confusions. Too few words and too little space. The disciples have assembled. Heaven is tottering, the basin is ready, the towel is tied. The Holy One of God bends his knee. The shadows encroach, the light crumbles, bread breaks, and wine spills. Sacred silence filled. Holy moment overflowing. Haunting seconds brimming a questioning promise a broken covenant a wandering band of followers and a worried messiah won't you wait here a while won't you wait with me a while long enough long enough to grasp even glimpse and hold even a fraction of a broken heaven Holy God, we come to worship in the gathering shadows of Jesus' suffering and death. We come with his friends, the women and men who have followed him in every time and place to live once again this story of service and betrayal, of weakness and courage. We come to witness your painful love in action. Be with us, we pray in the name of the one who is betrayed. Amen. Servant God, kneeling, bending, serving us, taking our dusty journeys. Wrap your hands around them. Every path we have trodden in life. Every word that has taken us to hurtful scenes. Every thought that has moved us toward the shadows. 
every act that has led us into harmful places. Wash away the pain as we confess and you forgive. Take the wounds of our traveling and hold them in your healing hands. Every journey of remembrance that holds too many memories. Every memory that weighs us down with anger we cannot surrender. Every place we have visited that holds too much pain. Wash away the lingering memories as we let go and you heal. Take away the discomfort we feel because of our failure to honor our own values. And cleanse us as you kneel at our feet. Every lesson about love we have not learned. Every heavenly value we have not grasped. Every truth of your realm we have ignored. Wash away hesitation as we accept your love. Jesus says, come to me, all you that are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. A reading from the Gospel according to John. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and to go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him he came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him, for this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, 
I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the gospel of the Lord. Welcome to this joint Monday Thursday service of Emmanuel and Rideau Park United Churches. Our joy to have you join us in this live streamed occasion. And my thanks to Reverend uh, Steve Clifton from Rideau Park for joining us this evening. Please join Rideau Park tomorrow morning uh, for our joint uh, Good Friday morning service. And thank you to Risa for playing Philip who uh, is singing this evening for Erica on uh, audio and Russ on video this morning and to our slide preparers as well. Thank you all for your gifts and your ministries among us. Shall we pray? Creator, as the dusk comes, may your light shine on us that we may know your word and know your way and live faithfully as your disciples. In Jesus' name we pray and ask, amen. He was a very gruff, retired public servant with whom the staff at the congregation I was serving at then were a little afraid of every time that he came in. He would show up about monthly to sit in my office and complain for about an hour about the government the United Church, and our local congregation in particular. And honestly, it was always a bit of a relief when he exited. His wife was placed in care during his ta this time with dementia. And the first time that I visited her, I mentioned that I knew her husband. And the faces of the staff all lit up with obvious joy. And I have to confess to you, at first I thought I must be on the wrong floor. But indeed, he was one of their favorites. And then on three occasions over those years when I was present at mealtime, he was always there feeding his wife with incredible patience, care, affection, a softness, kind words. It was really remarkable and a blessing. He was and is an example of love and of deep humility and of a contrast that I will never forget. Jesus, the master, washing the feet of his disciples' servants was an act of amazing humility, unexpected. So much so that Peter did not want any part of it. He didn't want that hierarchy of master and servant overthrown, even by Jesus. But that's exactly what Jesus did. He upset the apple cart. He set this example of what true humility looks like. There was a study a few years ago asking employees to name the quality which they most valued and followed in their leadership. And I think to most people's surprise, the number one answer was humility. Washing each other's feet feeding the wounded one in the long-term care, going that second and that third mile with the difficult person, caring for the least among us, those without shelter or food or clothing, companionship or family or community, those who are grieving or depressed or differently abled or addicted. Humility is the costly way of discipleship. The way that's less traveled by most. But Jesus sets it as the first and the foremost way of being together. I was wondering this week, how would you feel if your boss or your supervisor metaphorically washed your feet? 
if the Pope or the United Church moderator, or what if Doug Ford asked if he could wash your feet? Jesus was saying to the disciples, this is the way we operate around here. This is the way you should live after the resurrection. This is the way you should live in a pandemic. Wash one another's feet. As a novice student minister, I was sent to downtown Toronto, and I confess that the thing I was most afraid of doing was conducting my first funeral. And thankfully, before he left for a two-month vacation, my supervisor conducted two funerals and had me assist. So his absence, I had funerals, and I followed his example almost to the word. And I can still recall that feeling of gratitude that I had a model at least to work from and how it alleviated some of my fear. And to this day, I still incorporate his readiness that he showed me to acknowledge in the service the pain and the struggle of those who survived the death. What caught my eye this week in the text which Steve read for us was Jesus' conclusion, I have set you an example. I have set you an example. Washing each other's feet was an example, a prime example of how to live the Christian life, of how to be together as a community. Educators suggest that the principal way in which we learn is from example, from a model, Medical students learn by doing. Student teachers, student ministers learn by watching and doing and reflecting. They actually had taught us at Queen's Theology how to do a funeral. But for me at least, it paled in comparison to learning from and watching my supervisor actually lead a funeral service. So if Jesus says, follow my example, then we have a model to learn from, a model of how to be in community. I lead a retreat, I've led retreats for congregations who have experienced conflict with sessions on what are called holy manners. We would work through a developing a set of declaratory paragraphs to be read at all of their council meetings and all of their congregational meetings about their manners when they gather together as community. But in truth, my brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, it boils down to one thing. Follow Jesus' example. Wash each other's feet at your meetings. Wash each other's feet at your daily interactions, at public events, at family gatherings. Wash each other's feet in the way of Jesus' example of humility. In Christian community, in the example that we have from Jesus, we strive to do not as the world does, not as our culture or society do. We turn things upside down. We strive to follow Jesus' example and to serve those who are seen as the least among us, at the bottom of the hierarchy, the forgotten, those who are off on the edge. So on Mondays, we take food to the food bank. We prepare packs for the Dempsey Center. We support the work of Christie Lake. We reach out to our partner churches in Chimpembe and at the Iglesia Bautista Manuel, and we do it. Because the end goal for Jesus is above all else, one thing, love. Just as I have loved you, you should love one another. Indeed, may it be so for us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Footsteps could be heard running through the streets toward Caiaphas' lodging, but few heard them as bitter herbs, radish,
and celery were tasted. Soldiers' sandals sounded as they marched the alleyways out of the city, as they always did in tens, but this time with a purpose that was different, marching to a garden as the evening light turned to night. No one's attention was drawn to him. Them as roast lamb was cut with its slices of garlic for the Passover feast. At one table, a betrayer was accused. A holy man and his followers faced each other, denying and blaming the other. Only two of them knew who, who had done it, and one of them was soon to leave under the noise of shouting. He would walk the cobbled streets under the moonlight, passing menorahs in every window, smelling wafts of roast lamb, turmeric, and coriander as he moved toward a secret meeting place among the trees and the shadows. Around the table in an upper room, voices fell silent, and the rabbi took unleavened bread and with a face drawn and tired, ripped it. This is my body, he said. The followers looked at each other, foreheads furrowed. Take, eat it, all of you. Twigs snapped under the trees. The high priest's door shut. Footsteps went scurrying. And as they each ate a piece, chewing over silent questions, the teacher took a cup of wine that is part of every Passover meal and staring into it said, this is my blood, the sign of the new covenant. Drink it all of you. And as whispers were heard around the city and religious leaders moved by stealth to the meeting place, the bewildered cluster in the upper room did drink, all of them. If they had listened, maybe they would have heard what was happening in heaven and in the streets. But their ears were filled with the back and forth of questions and silence. The world was turning against them, and only one in the room could hear it. God, in anguish we behold you and walk with you through, on, into the shadows. God, hold us as we too walk through, on, into the world's shadows. God of passion, may we have the courage to stay awake as you pray all alone into the night. God of compassionate love, the world conspires against you and turns its back on your gift of redemption. God, kneel with us as we too pray into our nights, as forces gather and betray love's future. God of our day and night, be with us as we share your cup of pain and loss, trusting you when shadows seem so deep. God, you live in us. Help us to hold your cup and to walk in Jesus' footsteps through death to life.
Amen and Amen. Love has moved out. The room is silent. The table is abandoned. Broken bread, wine half finished, herbs and lamb scattered across the table. In the distance, you can hear footsteps moving through the olive grove. Whose they are, we do not know. The room hangs, suspended in time, cushions scattered, crumbs across the floor, a basin and a towel discarded near the table. There is a rustle of leaves from among the trees, a brushing of garments caught on branches, the sound of knees breaking twigs as they kneel in prayer. The room is cold, empty. The air is deep with the smell of betrayal and panic, of accusations and unfinished stories. And we are aware that someone has departed, his intricate blend of human and divine, prophetic presence, Galilean hope, teacher with whom we have journeyed and broken bread. Footsteps. Footsteps echo on their way past the house, out of the city. The room is dull. Shadows stretch across unfinished bread and half-drunk wine. Unfinished conversations hang in the air. A breeze from the empty window fills the space, and crumbs roll and tablecloth flutters as the wind searches and cools the wounds of that upper room. A ghostly presence fills the emptiness, tasting of unrequited love. Outside, there is a gathering with noise, shouts, and then silence. From the room, all that one can hear is a distant, subtle rattle of weapons on breastplates the circle is tightening. Suddenly, all at once, the wind changes direction. There are muffled voices, and a kiss is placed on the Galilean's cheek. It is the moment of betrayal.
kindly light amid the encircling gloom. Lead thou me on, the night is dark and I am far from home. Lead thou me on, keep thou my feet, I do not ask to see. The distant scene, one step enough for me. I was not ever thus, nor prayed that thou shouldst lead me on. I loved to choose and see my path, but now lead thou me on. I loved the garish day and spite of fears. Pride ruled my will, remember not past years. So long thy power hath blessed me, sure it still will lead me on. Or moor and fen, or crag and torrent till the night is gone. And with the morn, those angel faces smile, which I have loved long since and lost a while.